So the question was never about, did she do this? It was entirely a matter of, did she have any control? If experts testify that she did it while in a cannabis-induced psychosis. Was quite literally caught red-handed. While looking into this very bizarre story right here, a few questions consistently popped into my mind. Number one, did the system fail? And if it failed, where did it fail at? And number two, are we turning a blind eye to substance abuse in this country? And did money play a role in preventing something like this from happening then? Or is it playing a role in preventing something like this from happening in the future? This is a very strange situation and a lot to talk about. And if an open conversation is something you prefer, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the point, so let's talk about it. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. It would be at a dog park in Thousand Oaks, California, where Chad O'Malley and Bryn Spacer would first meet and start dating. Now, Chad was a accountant in the area while Brynn had just moved there to start her position as an audiologist at a UCLA health clinic. In just a few short weeks after that first encounter, during Memorial Day weekend in 2018, both their lives would be drastically changed forever. Now, what does Chad's father have to say about this chance encounter? Well, listen to him right here. He just met the wrong person at the wrong time, and the wrong conditions prevailed and he lost his life because of it. Now, what would follow the rest of that night is absolutely some of the craziest stuff I've ever heard. It would start with neighbors in an adjoining apartment hearing a lot of screams and police walking in to not only find Brynn and Chad, but they would find Chad with over 108 stab wounds. They would find Brynn covered in DNA with some self-inflicted wounds and the dog would have wounds as well. It was reported she was so out of it, they would have to use a taser to subdue her. Now, they caught her weapon in hand at the scene of the crime. And you would think in scenarios like this, that it is a done deal and this person is going away forever. Well, not so fast. Because they end up finding out that she's in a psychosis. And not only is she in a psychosis, the DA says that he's going to charge her with an involuntary passing. And what would this sentence traditionally carry in that state? We'll listen to this attorney right here. A more typical sentence would have been two to four years, according to Romani. So now we're going from a possible sentence of life in prison without parole to an involuntary charge that carries somewhere between two to four years. While most people think she was sentenced with two to four years, she was actually sentenced with only two years of probation and 100 hours of community service. So apparently in the state of California, within this particular situation, an individual's life is only worth two years probation and 100 hours of community service. So does Chad's father think justice was done here? Well, let's listen to him right now. There's nothing good that's come out of this for anybody. I think it would have looked like the system worked. I mean, there are people that are in prison right now that have done much less than what this girl has done. And after hearing his words, I would wonder from y'all if you agree. Was justice done in this case? Bren ended up getting a slap on the wrist. Because we have prime examples all over this country of individuals get behind the wheel of a vehicle while under the influence. After a long night of drinking, getting into an accident, and causing one to multiple people to pass away. And those individuals usually get some sort of long-term sentence and in other instances, life without the possibility of parole. I mean, a vehicular passing is a real charge. So what is the difference between a vehicular charge while under the influence and this? Now, the defense attorney for Brynn said that not only was she in a psychosis, but the particular herb she was smoking was something around 30% stronger than your average blend. And individuals have also said that something like this almost never happens. Well, listen to what this woman says right here. And I had this induced psychosis. It scared me to death. I didn't ever want to feel it again. I didn't know what it was. Then the mental health consequences can not just be short term, like short term psychosis, like what happened to me, but it can be long term like what happened to my brother who has schizophrenia. Now, she is a part of one of these substance preventive organizations. 
but she clearly says that at one point in time she did have a short-term psychosis from medicinal herbs. But not only that, her brother has suffered a long-term effect from this because now he has schizophrenia. And she does mention that these were an older type of herb that weren't nearly as potent as things are today. And the things they're growing today are almost scientifically engineered to be absolutely the strongest that they can possibly be. So to compare what's going on now versus what went on in the past is absolutely night and day in my opinion. So if she was affected 20, 30 years ago, there's no telling the effects that these things could have on our younger generations moving forward. So do we need some type of intervention or prevention here? Because clearly whatever it was she got a hold of was strong enough to not only convince a jury that she was in a state of psychosis, but also the authorities to include the district attorney. And while what's done is done, I'm not necessarily seeing justice in this particular case. Brent ended up getting a slap on the wrist. And I would wonder from you if you feel the same, or are you seeing any of this differently? Now, individuals have also said that the amount of money this is bringing into the state of California has been something that can be perceived as a potential roadblock towards prevention. And has anybody pushed any type of common sense legislation to prevent stuff like this from happening in the future? We'll take a listen to this. Now, it has been reported frequently over the years that in the state of California, they have at multiple times ran out of money to fund their own state. And I would almost wonder if somebody somewhere said that this couple billion dollar industry that we get 800 something million dollars in tax revenue every year should not be touched because we want that money. And if medicinal herbs is legal in your state, do they have similar legislation that limits the potential marketing towards kids that limits these things looking like candy and if so you can let me know down in the comments below the overall result in this story has absolutely left me perplexed i don't quite see how one man's life is only worth two years of probation and 100 hours of community service and i would wonder what external factors is missing from this story to justify that particular ruling because yes, you can be under a psychosis when you consume substances. That is not a mystery here. What is the mystery is how she is essentially, to a degree, getting just a slap on the wrist for taking somebody's life. It seems like every month there is around two to 300 reports of individuals on psychotropic substances attacking individuals and in some situations causing them to pass and they end up getting some type of long-term sentence. They don't get a slap on the wrist or probation. Now, the defense did say she was pressured by Chad to finish that bowl, and I would wonder if that was one of the factors they used in determining her sentence. But it honestly doesn't seem like enough. Now, Chad's father is clearly heartbroken. Bryn has been apologetic, and she has apologized to the family. But we have also once again heard countless people get in front of the court and apologize to family members because they did something stupid behind the wheel of a vehicle. A lot of this is odd to me, and I'm wondering if y'all heard this story too. And if you see any of these things differently, you can let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here. Y'all stay safe. I'll catch you in the next one.